What is up, y'all? It's your boy, Nikki. Y'all see the title. Y'all see the title. Bro, this is the truth about MTV. Pit My Ride. Now, I'm a big... I used to love watching Pit My Ride back then because I low-key was trying to get on it even though I was a little-ass kid and I had no type of car at all whatsoever to be able to even be able to get on pit my ride mind you the time that it aired i was that little yeah i had like the reruns i the rewind the rewind the reruns of it i'd be acting like it's a it's a brand new show it, it was never it was a rerun it never like bro, it was just, like, bro i wasn't even like you know what i'm saying but i wish they still had it to this day bro i really do bro because i'd be like bro pit my ride bro we used to clown the shit <laughs> used to clown the shit out of this show bro i'm talking about these niggas were all type of like they were all types of just like bro this shit like they they would pimp the cars out to people and be like bro look like if you think about it like bro half the shit they can't even afford to keep up you know what i'm saying real realistically they were putting like t like massive tvs in their car I remember they had an episode about a van and they put like a fucking, uh, what you would call it, a Cheeto, it was like a Cheeto dispenser or some shit, or a Cheeto pool or some shit, they fucking putting TVs on the rims, like, like, what it, like, bro, who thinks of shit like that, bro, like, what, who, who, why would you put a, a monitor, they were putting monitors everywhere, like, bro, that was like their signature, bro, they put a monitor on the, on the, on the wheels, bro on the rims bro like in, on, on, in the middle of the spoke like the middle of the rims bro like they put they put monitors on there like bro like who's watching tv while like bro nobody can replace this like what that makes no sense y'all put in the whole ass jacuzzis in the back of cars and shit in the backs of trucks with big monitors like realistically nobody's driving these cars all the cars that they did on bit my ride logically made no sense like you did nothing but made it even worse and it'd be with people that are already don't have jobs that are very poor and can't even make the payment as it is so y'all gonna give them a car that's gonna even be more expensive to take care of i remember they had put a fucking fish tank in one of the cars and then and i remember the nigga did not have a job for like three years or some shit like that like bro how the and he and he and he couldn't even take care of his his like bro he was still living at his mom's house i think he was like 30 years old or some shit like that y'all expected him, do y'all expect him to be able to take care of a bunch of fish in a in a tank in his car mind you and and the worst part about it he lived like in arizona or some shit i'm like bro that makes no sense like what you know damn well the fishes die bro he kept his car outside he didn't have i don't think he even had a garage i'm just like bro these don't make any sense bro but i still loved it because i was a kid i was like bro that looks cool but now looking back at it like i'm like bro low-key i do want them to bring it back because i feel like they would get this shit in it because it would be definitely good like good material to to laugh about but but I would love being on a show, but I'm gonna be like, bro, low key, y'all. If y'all gonna give me a free tuna, make it realistic. I don't want nothing too serious. I don't want a fucking jacuzzi in the back of my damn. Mind you, I have a sign on TC, so you can't even put no damn jacuzzi in the back. Like, like, no. Just give me, just fix my fender, um, fix my AC, uh, give me a matte black, uh, paint job, uh, fix my rims, uh, fix my headlights, uh. I guess I guess you can put a sound system. Now I don't really want a I don't really want a a bass system in my car. Honestly, just you can tweak my Alpines just a little bit, and then I'm good. I don't need no damn I don't need no damn. I mean, y'all can update my uh dashboard if y'all want to give me like a little updated dash. But other than that, I'm good. Y'all don't need to do no extra shit, bro. I do not want no fucking Cheeto dispenser in the back of my fucking car, bro. Like I don't need I don't need monitors in places where I'm not gonna even need the monitors at. Like, bro, that didn't, like, bro, I don't need no type of fucking big ass 42 fat back TV in the back of my car so people can can watch. Like, no, I don't need that. Like, bro, don't no, I'm good. I'm good. But other than that, this is the truth about MTV Pit Maride.
Obviously, I know it was a lot of fake shit. MTV was on some sketchy shit. First with Cribs and now this, bro. Like, bro, y'all. Anything for the views, all right? From 2004 to 2007, MTV's Pimp My Ride showcased jalopy after jalopy transformed into the crazy rides of each contestant's dreams. Hosted by rapper Exhibit, the show Shout would Exhibit, take bro. broken down, beat up vehicles and give them a complete makeover. While paint jobs and flashy rims were simply the start, as each ride would also feature crazy gimmicks inspired by the contestants' personalities. But the truth is, the show this contained had a, whole a lot of behind-the-scenes realities that make you wonder why anyone bothered to trust the show with their cars at all. Here's the surprising truth behind MTV's Pimp My Ride. In 2013, a man named Justin Derringer hosted a Reddit AMA devoted to his 2005 appearance on Pimp My Ride. There, he revealed that it actually took over five months for the show's mechanics to pimp his car. The show, meanwhile, made it seem like Justin's car was in the shop for only a few days. After well, let's be honest, bro. You Okay, even as a kid, I wasn't that impressionable, not that stupid to be like, bro, low-key. Like, it did not take them fucking five days to put all the shit in it. Where They have to literally order parts that might take up to, up to weeks to get it. Like, bro, nobody is that stupid to be like, Oh, it actually took them a whole week just to get all this? Like, come on, bro. If you ever even got your, like, bro, it, like, bro, if you ever got, like, a paint, like, a paint shit, all that shit, sometimes I take, like, two days, two to three days, bro. Like, come on, bro. Like, you can't be that stupid. After all those months, it turned out that all the pimping was all, as Justin put it, Mickey Mouse cosmetics. The shop didn't touch any mechanical issues whatsoever, focusing entirely on making the car look good. In addition, Justin dropped the bombshell that, during the five to seven months a car was getting pimped, contestants were on their own. They had to provide and pay for their own alternative transportation, and since most people don't own two cars, that often meant rentals. Problem was, since many contestants were under the age of 25, renting a car was oftentimes difficult. It's too bad MTV didn't think to pimp their bus fare too. Far more truth about the show came out in 2015, during bullshit. a Huffington Post interview with Justin and several other contestants. For one thing, almost the entire show was staged right from the get-go. Even the audition tapes were exaggerated or outright faked. One contestant, a 25-year-old woman named Brooke, was instructed by producers to say she was 22. Apparently, 25 is ancient in MTV years. They also wanted her to say she was a movie buff even though she wasn't, since they had a cinema-themed car in mind and wanted an excuse to make it. Brooke also said the scene where Exhibit surprised her at her home was faked. For one thing, she had already been cast on the show and knew full well he was coming. For another, it wasn't her house. Other contestants said they had the same experience. MTV would rent out houses that fit their TV vision, place the contestants in- <laughs> Wait a second. Wait a second. <laughs> so for all we knew, some of these niggas was probably living in cardboards? Cardboard boxes? Y'all wild for that one, MTV. Y'all wild for that and one. And tell them to answer the door when Exhibit came and act like it was the biggest shock of their lives. The show also attempted to create storylines for the contestants. A contestant named Seth told HuffPo that MTV made his episode all about his size. Because he was a bigger guy, the show threw candy all over his car and pushed him to say he did that because he wants to be able to enjoy a sugary snack at all times. Naturally, his pimped ride came complete with a cotton candy machine and the show filmed him chowing down. Damn. <laughs> Low-key, that kind of just pissed me off, bro. So not only did y'all... <laughs> So not only did y'all force this nigga to eat candy and act like he, y'all trying to be on some woke message about him being fat and shit, y'all just, y'all put a fucking, I think I remember this too, they put a cotton candy machine in his truck, you know how pissed off I would have been? First of all, I don't even like cotton candy. For y'all to put a cotton candy machine in my car, first, that's unsanitary. That is unsanitary. 
It doesn't make any sense. And that's just like, what? And the, I know the only way it, it will work if it's if I turn my car on. Because that's all where the. Bro, that's going to kill my battery. Y'all wild for that, bro. Y'all. In case you forgot for a second that he's not a size 2. Another contestant named Jake told producers that his grandma sometimes smoked in his car, so they threw cigarette butts all over the floor and seats to make it seem like she chain smoked there all the time. In addition, the show wanted a storyline where Jake was lonely because his car was so terrible. Problem was, he had a girlfriend in real life. MTV told him to either not mention her or dump her outright. Hopefully, he chose the former. The great Jake fabrication continued as MTV decided his car simply wasn't crappy enough for TV, so they used aircraft paint remover to make it look like his bumper was falling off. We're surprised they didn't drop a piano on the car to crush the roof a tad too. Even his reaction to his pimped out car was faked. MTV wanted their contestants to go wild with excitement, and apparently Jake didn't do that. So as he told HuffPo, a guy named Big Dane, who was in no! fact very big, gave no, not my nigga, bro. <laughs> bro, he was the light of the sh him and <laughs> what's the what's the dude that did the sewing? Was it like snitches or some shit? Yo, them two used to kill me all the time, bro. Was it like snitches or some shit? I forgot his gave name. Gave him bro. a ten-minute talking to that involved the encouraging statement: "We put a lot of work into this." We expect you to be a little more fucking enthusiastic. That sounds less like a helpful directorial note and more like a threatening mafia uh. shakedown. But the accessories themselves weren't faked, right? Well, kind of. All those cool toys were real, but most weren't designed to last. Bro, imagine having it. <laughs> imagine 2020 still having your pimp, pimp, pimp my ride car with a whole ass GameCube still attached in there. Knowing damn well nobody played <laughs> And I say this because I'm about to literally play playing some games that are on the GameCube, but I could never have it in my bro. They were literally playing full out game systems like niggas was gonna be playing games like have their trunk open. Like bro, like like think about it like this. Niggas really thought that it was cool to put a whole game system and a TV in their trunk, in their trunk, acting like people were just gonna play it outside. The fuck? <laughs> think about it, like back in the day, that was cool. But thinking about it now, this shit that makes no sense. Look at bro, look at this, bro. Imagine still having this with a i with the with an iPod. Let me continue. A lot of them either stopped working or were simply removed soon after cameras stopped rolling. Seth, for example, mentioned that the TV screens installed in his car, and in virtually every other car on the show, busted after just a few viewings. Yeah, that also, makes sense. the shiny LED lights they installed in his seats got real hot real fast. They were so hot, in fact, he could never really use them. He also got DeLorean-style raising doors installed on his car, That's but the rear doors had to be removed. Yo, this nigga used to kill me too, bro. I forgot his name, bro. This dude used to kill me too, bro. Like, what the fuck? He looked like that one uncle that's at everybody's barbecue. Y'all know what I'm talking about, bro. He was that uncle, bro. Moved before he actually drove the thing. The door's raising rod simply didn't allow room for seat belts. And remember that cotton candy machine? Well, the show neglected to install a dome on the machine, meaning the cotton strands would fly everywhere whenever he tried to use it. Justin, meanwhile, had both a pop-up champagne server and drive-in theater, which was a movie screen attached to the inside of his hood, installed as part of his pimping process. Neither were meant to be permanent, and both were removed after filming. The show's producer, Larry Hochberg, cited safety reasons for why many of the Yo, cars can... Yo, the nigga with the spikes, bro. Like, bro, hold on. We got to go back to that lineup, bro. Bro, this lineup... Ah oh, shit. Neither were meant to be permanent, and both were removed after filming. The show's producer... Bro, each and every one of these niggas was just a fucking, like... Because I think this is... Been, okay, so this was like the first couple seasons before they switched to West Coast Customs, right? Bro, they, this is all fabricated, bro. They were all fucking... This nigga looked like, um... What's that dude's name? Uh, Miley Cyrus... Uh, 
uh Miley Cyrus's dad. Uh he looked like he that's what he looked like. Uh then you got uh Debo. Then you got uh <laughs> Then you had the drunk uncle right here. Then you had uh who this nigga look like? He looked like he was in a 90s grunge band, uh 90s uh metal rock band like bro, he was trying extra hard. He was fucking weird, bro. And then obviously you have the two com compas right here. Like you have the two compas that you that you need to have at your at your uh at your uh at your uh what you call it? Whatever it, whatever this shit's called. Bro, you know damn well none of these niggas work the day in the life of them. Bro, they look like they all like bro, they have the UPS uh uh outfits on bro i i get like bro look at bro look at this bro this is all fabricated bro ain't nobody have a fucking like bro look at their meeting room this was staged bro thinking back and like nobody has a meeting room like this bro mtv larry hotsberg cited safety reasons for why many of the car's gimmicks were removed after filming this was essentially confirmation that they pimped cars for the camera and not the driver straight from the horse's mouth the camera's first attitude also explains why they almost never touched a car's mechanical issues. Seth told HuffPo he had to buy a new engine just a month after his ride got pimped. He also said the extra pimp features weighed his car down because the show's mechanics didn't adjust the suspension to accommodate all the additional weight. It made Seth feel like he was in a boat and his car would bottom out every time he hit a bump. Jake, meanwhile, needed a new muffler, but the mechanics did nothing. Instead, they installed a fake exhaust pipe simply to make the car sound and look cooler. Since the car itself didn't run any better, Jake wound up selling it a month after Exhibit and his team did their thing. Yeah. That all said, while the show was fabricated at best, fake at worst, it apparently wasn't all that bad to be on it. Many contestants have fond memories of their time with the Pimp My Ride team, and many who had to sell or junk their rides still miss their flashy wheels. One contestant even claimed the show helped him come out of his shell. I was really shy, he said, but being on the show gave me some confidence, and it made me the person I am today. I'm the most outgoing person you've ever met. Fake premise or not, helping someone become a better person is a positive mark on Pimp My Ride's I mean, I reputation. Gotta hit my ride. Yo, the theme song was crazy. But y'all are wild for that. Yo, MTV, y'all canceled. <laughs> bro, they were, I knew it was fake, but I didn't know it was that bad, bro. I did not know it was that bad, bro. That's crazy. But hey, if you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Click the notification bell to be notified when I'm uploading the video. This was wild, bro. Uh, <laughs> like, the fact that they didn't even work on the actual... Like, y'all notice how I said at the beginning, like, bro, I don't even want, like, all that. I just want a simple... Give me a simple tune-up, fix like you know, fix all the shit that I need to fix that's internally in my car. They never touched any of that. What was the purpose of y'all even like why? Bro, I don't even know if I can go back and rewatch Pit My Ride anymore. If if they got Pit My Ride episodes on YouTube, I think I might do a reaction and be like, I, I, I think I might do a reaction on Pit My Ride, bro. But hey, I hope y'all enjoyed. Exhibit MTV Gas and West Coast Customs Y'all fucked up Y'all some, some jazz niggas bro <laughs> That's all I got to say I'm out of this bitch